All right, welcome everyone to our webinar today on getting 10% more revenue from, with your, from your e-commerce without spending more. My name is Eddie Casado, I'll be your host today. I'm the Senior Growth Marketing Manager at Mouseflow. I'm joined by Jacinda Camboya, who's our Customer Success Manager specializing on e-commerce. Jacinda, it's great to have you. How are you today? It's great to be here. I'm doing great. I'm really excited to talk about some of the solutions we've created for our other e-commerce enterprise clients that I've helped with. Awesome. That's great. All right. So let's jump right in. Um, if a little bit about Mouseflow, it's a, we are a behavior analytics platform uh, that helps you improve your digital experience by showing you exactly how your users interact with your store and what you need to do to increase, in our case, uh, conversions and sales. So uh, we are the obvious choice for e-commerce, um, as uh, said by G2 on our top 50 commerce products of 2023. And this gives you a little bit of a competitive advantage, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. So part of the power of Mouseflow lies in emerging this common behavior patterns that are hurtful to your uh, store's growth. Uh, these behaviors are categorized as friction events in Mouseflow, and they could have a direct impact on, on increasing the flow to your checkout uh, journey, um, average, increasing average order value, optimizing sign up and, and checkout forms, and all, overall improving customer uh, service, even to the point of, of leveraging session replays for returns and exchange uh, processes. Now, uh, what we're going to be covering today is something that's been proven successful for a lot of our, our e-commerce clients, including Reigns, which is a global, uh, globally known lifestyle brand from, from Denmark that used Mouseflow to identify this friction uh, events and reduce it so that they could generate millions uh, more revenue in uh, for their e-commerce. Today, we're going to be a little bit of a rundown for today. We're going to be identifying friction in your checkout flow. That's going to be the, the main topic for today. Um, and we're going to break those down into friction events and friction score and mouse flow, defining what, what they are and what friction score is, using friction score to uh, spot opportunities and, and, and opportunities for improvement, what are the common friction events that uh, that your users uh, that we see on our clients uh, checkout flows using friction score as a benchmark, and then as a little bit of a homework, uh, setting up three friction related notifications uh, today. So to start with, Jacinda, why don't you walk us through a little bit of what is what are friction events, how are they defined, and what is friction score? Yeah, thank you, Eddie. So mouse flows friction scores are based on the calculation of the recurrence of the following friction events. We have click rage, which we are all victims of, you know, something is not working on your site, you click your mouse multiple times. And so we identified that as a click rage. Then we have click errors, which mouse flow is detecting something is not working correctly within the JavaScript. So this can be a broken link, uh, you know, a broken button as well too, something just not executing correctly. We have a mouse out, which is where we detect that the mouse is no longer on the page, usually signifying that a user has become uninterested in what they are looking at. Then we have a bounce, which is very prevalent for e-commerce, um, where the user is going between tabs within a certain time frame, usually probably price matching, looking at your competitors to see if they can get a better price. And then finally, we have speed browsing. Speed browsing is when the user may know exactly where they want to go. They go there very quickly, or this can tell us like an image or your site is not rendering quickly at all, and the user will move their mouse to try to get the site to render faster. Additionally, our customers at Mouseflow, they can always set up their own custom friction events. This can be, for example, 404 pages. Um, we usually advise our e-commerce clients to set up a 404 friction event. That way, managers can quickly tend to these journey-breaking moments in the user experience. Yeah, that's 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 great. And I think that's important to mention to those that are new to Mouseflow or, or, or that are considering um, subscribing or purchasing a license uh, from us is that all of these events are available regardless of the plan that you're on and that outside of the customized uh, friction events, there's no extra configuration needed. As soon as you start recording your site, uh, the mouse attack will eventually read all of the customer's uh, visitor's behavior and elevate this friction events to you. So I think that's important to mention. Also, if you have any questions during the session today, please 
uh, use the, the Q&A feature on Zoom and we'll get to, to answer those questions as we go along. Um, so moving on, we have a, a, a couple of use cases that, that we want to uh, take a, a, a deeper look into. The first one is a checkout use case. So how would you leverage friction score, friction events on the checkout flow, for example? So one excellent use case of a friction score is to use it as a filter in the funnel, as we have here as an example, we've applied a very unhappy filter. If we take a funnel of our checkout flow and apply a friction score filter, we can immediately watch sessions from those visitors that had the most challenges during the checkout. We can even watch an example recording from our funnel. If you go ahead and show our recording there, please. So as we can see here, we can see the example recording and we can go to the timeline and see what friction events have been happening. So right there, we see that we have an uncaught error from the JavaScript. So if you are sending this to a developer or somebody who manages you know, the technical side of your site, they can immediately start investigating and possibly debug right from the recording. They don't have to try to recreate the error or go to the site. So if they go to inspect, we can go ahead and see our console log errors to see what exactly is going on. Why did this error come up in our recording. We can see, all right, we have a few errors there and possibly we need to go ahead and we need to fix something. This is this is incredible. And I think one of the one of the biggest differences in, in our offering for session replay and, and JavaScript errors is that you can actually access the code right from the recording because we're actually uh, downloading a full copy of the HTML file, which is usually not available when you're uh, replaying sessions. So I think this is super useful, especially if you're sending the recording out to a developer that maybe doesn't even have access to Mouseflow and it's an external resource, they can absolutely look at this recording without even logging in. So I think this is super useful um, to, to showcase for the audience today. And additionally, too, we can go a bit further than just debugging. We can create our hypothesis within the recordings, too. So if we look and see at our click rage, um, we know, OK, so this user thinks this is a button. If yeah. we create a button out of this element, then we could see an increase in our conversion, which is ultimately what we want as e-commerce. And we want to simplify the navigation journey for our users. Perfect. Yeah, it's all about those micro conversions, right? To get them from point A to point B, in including that button or maybe a hyperlink to that image will increase the CTR, right? And we'll get them, you know, further in their journey instead of just stopping and, and trying to find what they could find with one click with several clicks. So I think that's also super important that hypothesis generation aspect of of using friction score and events. Um, so I think we have another case also to showcase today which is um, coupon error use case. And I know you love this one. I do, I definitely do. And all of my, all of my e-commerce clients, I'm you know, a big supporter of this use case. It's super beneficial to track coupon code failures and to see possibly what coupon codes users are trying to use on your site. You want to see how this will affect the checkout process for your customers. As e-commerce clients are aware, you can receive a lot of window shoppers. Sometimes when clients are using tools such as Honey, which is a Chrome extension to help find promo codes, this can either encourage or discourage the checkout process. So I usually recommend my e-commerce clients to include the custom friction tag for failed promo codes. Yeah, I think that it's, it's, it's one of those wow moments, right? When you can actually track this because um, if, if, if the coupon is invalid, it, like you said, it could discourage people to just go elsewhere. But if you don't have anything to track these interactions, you won't be able to know exactly what's going on and maybe replay them back or even use them as a filter on your conversion funnel setup and then see how the, the conversion rate fluctuates when there is an invalid coupon and when there is no invalid coupon. So I think that's super important. And, and just a a little note here, how would you set this up? I understand that this can be done with Google Tag Manager and that's a preferred way of doing it, right? Yeah, that is. Google Tag Manager is definitely 
a more user friendly. There's a lot of resources on how to learn how to use Google Tag Manager. You do have the option of doing this via manual code, but oftentimes you need to have some JavaScript knowledge or you need to help with developers. So it's why we usually will recommend Google Tag Manager, which has a very easy to use user friendly setup. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, so now that we've reviewed these two use cases, uh, that you could essentially put into practice today, right? You don't have, unless you need to set up the uh, coupon error tag, you could start using friction score and friction event to see how the numbers fluctuate in your, on your checkout flow and then get some insights. So I think that's something to start with right after we, we leave the session today. And then moving on, I think that one of the biggest things in, in I would say in any industry, but in e-commerce particularly is the use of benchmarks, right? You wanna know how you're converting. You wanna know how you're stacking against the conversions and everybody loves benchmarks. I know I do at least. So is there a way, is there a benchmark? Is there a way to get to the benchmark of friction score and how how should we get there uh, on Mouseflow, Jacinda? Yeah, absolutely. And you are correct. Everybody does love a good benchmark. So we do have a special section for it in our trend tile of dashboards. When you hover over the average friction score of your site, you can access a little tooltip that will tell you how you are stacking against other mouseflow clients within your industry. Clients will usually refer to this when they are assessing the impact of the changes that they've made on their checkout flow or their overall performance. Additionally, if you want to leverage more concrete KPI metrics on your site, filtering through the dashboard can help you accomplish this. For example, if I want to receive the average friction score for website versus mobile or for certain user behaviors, for example, for users who clicked on our AB testing, uh, I can filter our option here and get those average benchmarks. Yeah, and I think this is a, it's a great use case because from what I've seen from our clients as well is that there is a little you know, the experience on mobile responsive is not always the same as it is on the website or on desktop. So it's important to also understand where the traffic is coming from to assess friction score and friction events, because there might be some differences in behavior. For example, organic traffic doesn't always behave the same way that a paid, uh, a paid traffic does. So with friction score and the use case that you're mentioning about the devices, it's also important to understand that most of the friction score might sometime, might sometimes happen on mobile instead of desktop. That way, when you split it up, you can focus the resources accordingly, right? So if you look at the, uh, if the friction score is higher on mobile than it is on desktop, then it might be make a good choice to go to mobile responsive and fix those errors, right? Um, as usually this could drive the strategy of getting the friction score as close to zero would be the goal here. So I think this is also another great use case of in, in this particular instance of using benchmarks to get to the bottom of what's actually driving the, the challenges for your, for your visitors. Um, moving on, um, like I said at the beginning, I always try to leave the audience with a, with a little bit of homework that is actually actionable and something that you can use immediately after the, the webinar. And the homework today is quite simple, is to set up three friction-related notifications, right? So let's we're going to go over the three and then uh, dive in a little deeper on, in each one on what is the benefits of this um, uh, friction-related notification. So the first one being clicker and click rage combo. I know that's one of the, your, your preferred uh, combos, Jacinda, we have failed submits and using UTM conditions. So first up, let's talk about the click rage plus the click error combo notification. So the click error and the click rage combo notification is going to allow you to react quickly and avoid losing potential customers. When you're setting up the notification for click error and click rage, this is going to allow you to receive um, an email full of all of the recordings that did trigger this notification. And this can be sent directly to your developer's inbox or to a dedicated Slack channel. When you set a threshold that's going to alert you when too many of these sessions are recorded, this is going to give you a hint about broken buttons, unresponsive elements, or just generate opportunities for improvement. Combining it with the click rage friction, this is going to come handy when you're releasing new iterations of your store and perhaps fix something that broke in the pro process. This is going to save you a ton of back and forth and prioritize the fixes that have potentially broken your store. 
That's that's correct. And time is money, right? The, the less back and forth, the better, especially if you can automate this workflow and, and get people working on the errors rather than you explaining the error that sometimes you can't even do so because like in the case of fail submits, they're invisible, right? They only happen if we are capturing those events. Um, and then setting it up is, is quite easy, right? And, and remember that um, accessing the filtering section on Mouseflow, you can do it from any of the features. It's, it's always uh, persistent. So if, in this case, if you're on the dashboards, you click on add filters will be the step one. Uh, selecting the friction events would be step two, which is click error and click rage. And then saving this notification or this of this filter and setting up the notification afterwards here you can see that you know you can select multiple conditions if you want this to be shared with the team or not you can put the name on so you can easily identify it and also you can um, select the frequency to, of, of, of for this notification to be delivered to you so it's quite easy again if if at any point you feel stuck on any of this uh, you have our amazing support team available to help you out following this this use cases and setup and moving on to the to the other two we have failed submits I know this is huge, especially for e-commerce. And, and you recently had a, a very sour experience, I must say, uh, Jacinda, that you were sharing with me uh, offline. So why don't you walk us through what failed submits are and how do you set them up and what's the benefit of that? Yeah, so failed submits are when we know something is not working. This can be, you know, filling out a form, entering your credit card information, trying to go to the next step of your checkout funnel. And when the user hits submit and it doesn't go through, they don't go to the next page. So yeah, as I was telling you, um, you know, before our webinar today, I was trying to buy some sheets on a site and I couldn't complete my order. I didn't receive any error notification. I, you know, they, I couldn't figure out what was going wrong. And eventually I had to go to a competitor to try to get the sheets that I wanted. And so you really do want to know as an e-commerce store, is this happening to your clients? Because you can lose potentially a lot of money. So the failed submit does require customization, meaning that you do need to use Google Tag Manager or you do need to use a manual code approach to set this up. But I believe Eddie will send all of the information later today on how this can be set up and you know, going about setting up the notifications. You can be alerted the moment this happens and react accordingly. Absolutely, I think it's that's one way to recover potentially lost conversions, and and a little, a little hack here that I always recommend to 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 our e-commerce clients is that you could also set up feedback surveys on felt submits as well. I know we're not covering that today, but it's one of those uh, use cases that you could potentially recover uh, potentially lost conversions, right? Because if it's a felt submit event, and then you can pop up a message saying like, "Hey, it looks like there's something wrong. Give me your email so that we can continue the the." the transaction with you hand in hand. I think that's also super important to set up right from the get-go. Um, on Then moving on to the, to the last uh, friction-related notification is using UTM conditions. Now, as a marketer myself, this is one that I, you know, I set up for, I always recommend to set up for all the clients that we have on e-commerce because most likely you're spending money on these things and you're spending money on getting traffic. And by virtue of using this UTM conditions, you could actually set up notifications to alert you if you're running traffic or paying traffic to a landing page that isn't actually working, even having failed submits or a high friction score or a high frequency of click rage events would potentially tell you that there is something wrong with the landing page. So you can pause the campaign, come back, come back to the landing page, look at the recordings, fix it, and then get that campaign back up and running without burning a lot of a lot of uh, resources through, you know, a, a, a failed experience, right? So those are the three notification uh, related to friction events that um, is your homework for today. Um, I don't believe we have anything else to cover for the webinar. I want to thank you, Jacinda, for your time and spending some of that wisdom on e-commerce with me, with the audience and everyone. And thank you to the audience for joining us today. Jacinda, maybe you want to say goodbye as well. Yeah, no, thank you for having me. I hope all of this information is a little bit helpful for everybody. And if you ever need any support with getting those, you know, those codes or those tags set up, our support team is probably the best in the world, not to toot our own horn, um, so they can help you accomplish that. Thank you so much. So with that, uh, goodbye, uh, happy mouse flowing. Uh, we'll see you around. Bye, everyone. Bye.